Okay, hi guys. So I'm doing limits and continuity. And I think one of the more confusing concepts is limits with absolute values. So I have two practice problems for y'all. Okay, so first we have the limit as x approaches 1 of this beautiful function. So first things first, you always try to just straight out substitution first. So we try plugging in x equals 1 into here. And we notice that we get 0 over 0, which is kind of scary. And usually when this happens, we just use hospital rule. But how on earth do we take the derivative of absolute value? Yeah, I don't know either. So well, let's think about this a different way. And we know that absolute value is just a piecewise function, really. So we can write it as x minus 1 negative and x minus 1 positive. And we know that this is going to happen when x is less than 1. And this is going to happen when x is greater than 1. Because if we plug in a 1 here, then it's going to be 0. Same here. And we're looking at when it's positive and negative. Yeah. So now that we have that, we can break this up into two different limits. The limit as x approaches 1 from the right, no, that's left, and the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. Yep. So we know that we can just leave x minus 1 on bottom because that doesn't change. But now we split it up using our piecewise function. So if it's approaching from the left, then that means that x is less than 1, or it's negative. So we plug that in right here. And then if it's approaching from the right, then we have this up here. Greater, x is greater than 1 because it's going to be positive. So. Yep. And then from that, we can do this, where you can see how they're just going to cancel. So this one equals negative 1, and this one equals 1. Now a little alarm bell should be going off in your head, because we know that if we have a limit from the right and limit from the left that are different values, as these are, then the limit does not exist. So D and E. Hooray! Okay, so that's that one. And then this is the next one. So we're looking at the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of that beautiful function right there. So we're going to kind of go through the same process. We know that if we plug in 0, then it's going to be 1 over 0 minus 1 over 0, which is just crazy. We don't know what to do with that. So we're going to split this up again. So we have absolute value of x, which is really just a piecewise function, meaning we have negative x and x when x is less than 0 and when x is greater than or equal to 0. Yeah, so now we can look at our limit here. So we have limit as x approaches 0 from the left. So since we're only focused on from the left, we can just look at our piecewise function for what we have for the left which is when x is less than 0, negative x. So we, when we rewrite our function here, we can just have this, negative x. Now you notice that that's two negatives, so we basically end up with 1 over x plus 1 over x, which becomes 2 over x, the limit as x approaches zero from the left. Yeah. So then we can look at this two different ways. We can just imagine x getting closer and closer to zero, and we know that when we have a constant over something that's getting closer and closer to zero, like that, that's going to approach infinity. But because we are approaching x from the left, it means that we're plugging in negative numbers, so these should actually be negative. 
are getting closer and closer to zero from the left, so negative numbers. So our infinity now becomes negative infinity. So that's the limit. And since we know that that's not really a number, it does not exist. Hooray! So the other way to look at this is to look at 2 over x, and we know that that's going to kind of look like this. Like 1 over x. Right. So if we're looking at the limit as x approaches 0 from the left, then we're just looking at it as it approaches 0 from the left, and we notice that it goes to negative infinity, which is consistent with what we said here. So yeah, either way.